Okay, so just you can just jump into it, like your your life your life story. A good a good example would be like picture like if you were to write a book and then just yeah. shoot it in this like this little episode. You got me it could be thirty minutes, it could be an hour. Sometimes they're like TED talks. You get me. I know you're like very successful. Um, and, and just like kind of just share your story, Mr. Blanger. Like okay. uh, upbringing, yeah. Like, sure. Okay. Good so frame, let's right? Start, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we'll start from scratch. So the thing is, where I grew up, uh, you know, I come from a family, single mother who took in her brother. So I kind of, my mom inspired me of what hard work is and, you know, family number one and take care of each other, right? No matter what it takes, what she worked, three jobs, et cetera, all that job, right? But lo and behold, like they say, you are who you hang out with. It's so true. Anybody says otherwise, got to get their fucking head checked because I'm living proof and I'm sure you're living proof and everybody else that you've seen that you, you know, uh, aspire to that you think is, you know, you know, who's made a name for himself, who, who came from nothing, you know, like myself, right? So, uh, so obviously I grew up in the projects my entire life. Um, you know, like going back to my mom, she comes from foster care her whole life, right? So it's not like she was taught any real skills in terms of how to raise a family and et cetera from two normal parents who raised her, right? So she grew up really, really tough, which is sad, but day to day she, you know, had my brother had, you know, me and my sister were twins. And then we grew up in Du Maurier, uh, which is a hardcore, really rough project for about seven years. And then, you know, as you're growing up in the projects, you know, I grew up with the, the mentality is, so this is truly the mentality in the well. Uh, when you saw your kid, uh, your buddy who sort of comes from a good family with both parents and they bought him a bike, like a motorbike, uh, well, a bicycle, BMX, Redline, Kuahara, GT. I know all the bikes because I was right into BMXs, right, when I was a kid. And our mentality was, uh, is why would your parents buy that bike? You could have just sold the fucking thing. That's how really up my mentality was growing up. Now, I know it was wrong, but when 10 of your other friends are going out as a crew, going, you know, uh, tr driving on their bikes or bicycling, uh, driving, but anyway, uh, bicycling for a half hour from where you're located to go steal bikes and bring it back to your area, then highly unlikely that someone will spot the bike, right? Not to mention right. that we, it's almost like we ride our own <laughs> chop shop, right? In the forest, yeah. we would bring them into the forest or our buddy's basement, his parents would somehow let us, the bikes in there, we'd take them all apart, spray paint them, knock off the serial numbers, just like a chop shop. And so that's, uh, you know, where it kind of started there uh, when it came to going into the bigger story about how the life of crime that I had, obviously, which turned into a book and a movie of my life, obviously, right? Um, but the long story short is you were definitely who you are, who you hang out with, right? So you show me your friends, they'll show you your future. So starting with little things like that. And then believe it or not, uh, the good things that my mom taught me, then I, you know, used to have a paper route when I moved from Demori uh, projects to Richie Street projects, which is worse in my opinion. So I lived in those projects for another seven years. So pretty much projects my entire life till I was around 15. So was that in Canada always or no? Canada always, yeah. In the west okay. end of Ottawa. Ottawa is it's the nation's capital. So Ottawa is like the, the capital of Ottawa, yeah. <laughs> so, but I had a fun life though. My guy, you know, a lot of my friends were stuck in the house. Soon the lights came on me. Pff, I was gone till midnight doing all kinds of shit, right? You name it. I, I mean, we can go on for hours about it, but... It, you know, growing up like that on the streets like that somewhat, it really, you know, it, it teaches a lot of things how to read people. And I think that's why I've done well going into the, you know, the next conversation we'll have later on in your podcast, right? And I just want to let you know, though, I'm only doing this podcast with you because I got to give you kudos. You're relentless, but you're a suave, professional. You, you hit me with a drip campaign, uh, keeping a relationship going on for the last few years, I think it has been, right? You've been always been supportive. I said to it, fuck it. I said to my wife, I'm going to give this kid a, a shot because I get a lot of people ask me to do podcasts and I always turn them down other than the one I did for this gentleman because uh, he's done a lot of time and he's very successful to this guy 23 and one lockdown uh, very very successful uh, YouTube channel he's got uh, this guy's got about 650,000 subs what have you but anyway this is a guy who came from nothing as well but not to go on that tangent so when you grow up in the project your whole life uh, Noel uh, from my own experiences then you become a little yeah. more hardcore right and you pick up some bad things. So then I grew up doing two things in, you know, what's really gotten to the level when I was doing all these safe jobs across Canada and all that jazz, right? It's, it really started with, and this is kind of sad in way now being a father of two girls, right? Uh, is I grew up idolizing bank robbers. And the, and, and the guy who really idolized me, his name was Patty Mitchell. And you should look it up. It's a great book to read. They're from Ottawa. They're Ottawa's folk heroes, but 
They're the best, most prolific bank robbers in, in North American history, as far as I'm concerned. There's no bank robbers like these guys. But I actually grew up, and they're called the Sh uh, not the Champagne Gang, the Stopwatch Gang, because when they're robbing banks, Buddy would come in with a stopwatch on his chest because they're running up two seconds and, you know, a slew of other little uh, things uh, that they would do in order to have a successful bank robbery, right? Uh, but point is, I grew up idolizing Patty Mitchell. I had his, his mug shot on my wall, his fingerprints, all his aliases. And I used to idolize this guy thinking I want to be the next Patty Mitchell. How pathetic is that? So you see how, so how much was it that you guys were able to make? Like, I think like 50 million or like how much was it? No, no, God, no. <laughs> I wish I'd probably still be in prison for that. No, it was roughly about, <laughs> five, to about five to six million. Uh, God is good. But keep in mind, that was over the course of like, say, seven, eight years, right? I pled to almost, uh, you know, close to 200 break and enters commercial across Canada. So we're very successful. Uh, I actually pled to 54. You know what the Bible says? Like just with Jesus, that? the Jesus of Nazareth, you know, Christ, I don't know, Christ pretty much, I think is awesome. Cause he's like, when he's you pretty best. much, like, yeah, he, God he, first. He, he, Jesus is the cool kid. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> so it's like, it's like the only thing that you could do deliverances that like you could break generational curses. You get me, you can break pretty much like, you know, things that are not good. Like at any point that is like, in the family or like the lineage you get me it could be blessing finances because when you i had this other millionaire pretty much because i always have like a lot of people that are always talking to me everybody's so friendly to me and it was just like uh you know if you put the kingdom of god first you get me you're going to become wealthy and then matthew says that and i'm over here having a podcast interview with you mr belanger which is crazy because this is like the end of the year you feel me so this is like you know a lot of the time in, like you know the devil always tries to attack things for, towards the end of the year but it's just like, I don't know, like, this is a blessing. It's like finishing the year big. You get me? Because I'm always kind of like working towards my goals. You get me? Because I'm a young kid. I kind of got my life together. Like, God yeah. is good, though. Right? Yeah. And I think you're doing amazing, yeah. by the way. We'll probably talk about off-grid. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. God is cool. Yeah. So my whole thing, going back to your your question again, is, is I actually grew up idolizing this group of bank robbers. Now, what kid cool. grows up idolizing a bank robber? But needless to say, it goes to show, though, if you put your brain to it and you have passion for it, because passion, you know, takes over everything. you got to love what you do if you want to be successful. I'm a firm believer, just like I tell my daughters, I don't care what you do. I can't tell you what to do until you find something you actually love, then go for it. You know, if you become the best in that particular industry, you're going to be the best. You're going to have a good life. You're going to make a lot of money. Now, money isn't everything. I've learned that, too. Don't get me wrong, but it, it certainly helps. Right. You like got to have that balance. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, money's a good thing, but it's not everything. I'll tell you from experience because of course it's not. Yeah, you gotta, you know, families. I think very Options. important as well, obviously. But you need the money to have a happy family. But there's a lot of fucking very rich people out there, miserable fucks, and negative fucking. What are you bitching about? And I'm thinking, you know, you're sitting on twenty million. What's your problem? You know, like the old saying, "Crying in the Ferrari." Like this is pathetic. It's just, it's all about, you know, perception and what really makes you happy. My whole focus is always present. You know, focus on the day today, the present, not the past or the future. You know, every day counts, make it count and all that jazz. But going back to your question, you know, how oh, I came oh. to be successful. That's is right. there anything I've ever touched uh, going back to analyzing bank robbers or Wayne Gretzky, hence top closer 99, who's my idol. I want to be the next NHL hockey player, but sure enough, I went left. Why don't you and... make more content online, Mr. Bellinger? Well, I just to be honest with you, Noel, I, I haven't because now raising a family with two girls in competitive dance, I have one that's flying now three times a week, going for a pilot license. She's only 17. Yes. I'm very proud of her, right? Is it Eve's or Ives? Eve. Eve. Yeah, yeah. The wolf okay. calls me Ives. <laughs> I thought it was Ives as well, originally, because then I saw the yeah. video where you were like, it's Eve's, it's Eve's. Yeah. But the way that now you say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of exactly. course. You're, you, have a, you have a tremendous sense of humor. You're, you're, you have a good humor. It's yeah. like cocky well, honey, but like it's genuine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so in your own you heart. Call me anything you want. You know, I yeah. work, uh, you know, I have an alias like at work because I try and protect my identity. That's why I can go say whatever I want on my own little social media. But I live a lot, kind of a double life, to be honest with you. Because I have an alias that anyone knows me in the work uh, field that I'm in. I, I, well, I'm not going to give the alias up, but the point is, is I'm a completely different person. It took my kids a long, you know, quite a while to understand why they call me that dad. I'm like, oh, it's a long story because they were kids they want to tell them, right? But now they know everything. And 
they totally, you know, aspire to what I tell them to do now because they're like, okay, now dad knows what the fuck he's talking about. Okay, I'm not going to challenge him because clearly he knows what he's doing because look at the life we're living, right? Because we travel, we, well, you see it. We do a lot of shit, right? And this is coming from a guy with zero education, rap sheet right across the fucking country. You know what I mean? And uh, that's why I'm going to go back to, you know, you didn't go to high anything school. is possible if you put your dream, you know, your mind to it, right? Right. You uh, dropped out of high school? Is that what it was? Yeah. I got no high school. I got nothing, but I got maybe a great 10. Now, am I, am I the greatest speller? No. Am I the greatest, you know, So writer? you were there until like sophomore year and you dropped out? Sorry? You were there until like sophomore year and then you like dropped out? Yeah, well, I bought a I, I, my yeah. teacher. Yeah, I, got, I was cool. charged for assault, for assault cool. in my teacher. Cool. Yeah, so that didn't help either. And even though they dropped the charges because he kind of started it, right? But it was wrong what I did now that I'm older. And I think, fuck, what are you, stupid? You're body slamming your teachers? And, and, you know, a bunch of other slew of other things that were happening in my younger life. But, yeah, school wasn't for me because by then, uh, grade 10, I was making a lot of money doing illegal activities, right? Um, just about any fucking, you know, uh, yeah, you were balling, though, you think sir. Of, I was doing it. Sorry? You were balling, sir. Yeah, I was all over the map, right? And so the point <laughs> is, going back to doing what really got me in trouble was, you know, hitting all those shoppers drug marts, which I pled to 54 shoppers drug marts hitting the safes right across the country. I mean, and I'm not bragging about it, but it's, when I look back, I get to see a guy pull that off, really, when you think about it. But I'm saying that only to go, to use as, a, as an example that if you dream and want to be the best at something, then you'll be that guy. Just like I was the best at doing that. And look what happened. Now, it was a negative thing what we did, but I truly believe that that's my life and that's what I want to do. And I want to be recognized as the best fucking con man in the country, right? That's now getting old, you realize what, is, what an idiot to think like that. But you know, it's a good it's thing because you were thinking big. You were, it was just reverse thinking. Yeah, I think because it's the same part. entrepreneurial mindset. To a large exactly. degree, you get me. You know, it, it, you know, of course, you get me. Has like it's like, what, what's what's a good word that you'd like to like? I guess integrate for that, like, um, or or exchange, like, or or utilize, like, um. So are you cut it's, out it's, there? It's, like, it's like a good, it, 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 it's like a good entrepreneurial mindset. Like like a lot of the time, you get me like at any point. Like let's say you're like a drug dealer, but you're a very good drug dealer, and like you have we're making a lot of money. You get mm -hmm. me just like on an outside like examples, and it's like you could pretty much become successful because you could well, switch anything. So what was your story? Because they because you went to jail, didn't you? You were like in prison. Yeah. I went a few times, yeah. Well, like, what happened was, well, what would be like a good like inspiration and like life lessons? Because you're rich now as fuck. It's so, like that's really cool. You have, well, that's, I'm not that's rich every as person. Fuck. That's like that's like the top ten percent of the world, top fifty percent of the world. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm rich as fuck. That's I would never get that title. But I, 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 <laughs> so I live a very by the way. <laughs> very good life. I do. Yeah. yeah. I won't doubt it. And yeah. I spent a lot of money too, but I'd rather cool. make memories instead of you know holding every little shackle in my name and and all that jazz. But I'm smart my money. Yeah, but to answer your question, like you were saying, uh, you find me anybody successful, either drug dealing or breaking entering or um, stealing cars, whatever it is. If you're the best at whatever you do, most likely that guy, from my own experience, you put him in the normal legitimate business world, he's going to be successful because yeah. he's got that same passion. He knows how to read people. He knows how to get what he wants because he's picked up a lot of stuff on the way up to get to where he was, right? And that's where I've done well of dealing because I got a lot of guys that are working for me. Okay. They, all have, they all have degrees. Oh, yeah. Everyone's got a degree working under me that, you know, everything they're selling, I'm getting a piece of it on top of that, right? So my point is, it's a matter of what I would suggest to people if they really want to. You have like your own boiler road operation, pretty much. Like, how do you do this? You train the salesman because you've trained yeah. me a lot. You've helped me sharper. You've mentored me. I know I've told you. Yeah. Like before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think in terms of, you know, uh, when it comes to the mentoring, you got to lead by example. You can't mentor somebody really when you got shit to talk about. When, well, well, give me your, why are you so good? Tell me why you're so good. Other than the money you made, but tell me something that's very unique about you, right? Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of guys out there, not just in, uh, me, but there's a lot of guys out there who came from nothing, from prison, who, who were very successful, right? And it's, it's, I think the biggest one is just passion. And, and, and but one thing I think is, and I try and, you know, I did a thing on YouTube, but now I got off it because I was getting a lot of people DMing me some really both crazy shit I wouldn't even get into. But I just think I didn't realize that I don't have time for it, to be honest with you. 
uh, with my own job and raise my family and trying to break out in the social media world. Now, if I got hired somebody to do it and help me along the way and, and, and quit my job and, and went balls deep into it, sure, maybe I can do something because I get a lot of DMs periodically. Hey, what did you do to get here? And wow, that's pretty. I, mean, I read about you in prison because my book's in prison. A lot of prisons across Canada too, right? No, I got lucky. I never ended up in jail. Uh, I could have ended up in jail a couple of times. Well, I, if you I did. I, I, Holy Spirit is cool. I got guided different. It was yeah, fun. but you know what? No, well, yeah, even life if you lessons. did Because you know yeah. what Christ says? It says you're a new creation in like Christ. So it's just like you have to let go of the old. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this much. Even if you went to prison, you're young. Who gives a shit? Now, I'm not saying... I had, a, a, I had a friend of mine. He had a felony. He actually has a felony. He's making multiple six figures now. Another buddy of mine. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the other ones we try to inspire uh, the rest of them. That's why I thought this would be a great collaboration, by the way, as well, because there's a lot of people in, outside in the community that you're going to be able to have a successful testimony such as yourself, Mr. Benner, because you're very successful. I know you're modest, but you're very he, successful, sir, and you have a game. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think, again, it's just boiling down to being driven, put your head down, keep your mouth shut, and call people out and if they don't like it too fucking bad and when you know their your superior sees it and they may not like it but then they say hey this guy knows how to manage people which i think is another great uh skill set to learn but you learn that again from where i came from from the street uh and you're not scared to you know call people out even from the owner that you work for or what have you because at the end of the day they'll respect you if you want to be yes sir yeah. yes sir guy all the time well you're not going to really move up too quick you kind of got to make a splash sometimes and create yourself some attention. Why, you know, people are talking about you. like the old sayings, if they're talking shit about you or talking good about you, my whole yeah. thing is at least they're talking about you. Right. And that's how you get people's attention. And then you get them to do what you want to, you know, want them to do because you already did it. You led by example. So that's why I say to anybody who's educated, who's been to prison, I don't give a fuck where you come from. Don't tell me, Oh, well, you don't know my story here. Okay, I, I just don't want to hear any bullshit like that because everybody's got a story. At the end of the day, you get off your ass and use the tools that are provided to you and learn how to be mentored. And there's a lot of guys still to this day that I follow that I will still learn every day. It's You're so one of my mentors, you chair, right? Yeah. Sorry? You're one of my mentors, you chair, right? Yeah. I mentor you. I think so somewhat. Uh, well, you know, because you're always DMing me here and there. And, you know, I'll give you my feedback because I think you're really genuine. Because if you weren't, Bro. trust me, you wouldn't be having the Zoom right now, right? I wouldn't be giving myself up the time to do this uh, this stuff, right? So, but that's my way of giving back to you because you're really genuine. You're a really good person. And I and I, I tell my kids, I, I talk to my kids about you. I, I, I tell them, you know, this kid yeah. knew well, and I showed a picture of them. Bro. This kid knew well, you watch this kid. He's not really, you know, flying right off the handle right now. But I give this kid no, 10 years popped. from now, <laughs> you trust me. I you money right go, now. You, the solar thing it's amazing you got me like i'm, I'm with a group i'm a, with a cool group of guys you got me i, I kind of redid my bio so i'll just share for it so con continue with you please sir <laughs> yeah. well, if, you, if you don't stop doing what you're doing now you're just starting right i promise you when you look back 10 years from now there'll be guys calling you like you're calling me saying hey would you be able to want to be on my Thank podcast you, I, I wouldn't be surprised that you're a main name in the industry in, in years to come. If you just don't give up, like the old saying, remember why you started, right? And you've been going at this gig for quite a while. And is it flying yet? No, I wouldn't say that, but it will. It just takes time to get certain guys like you did to me to finally get me that to come cool. do a podcast, right? Oh, I mean, this is going to open doors, actually. Yeah, thank you, by the way. Well, I, I, hopefully it does. But again, you got to go after other guy, big guns that don't want to talk to you and, and give them your time and, and providing, you know, you got your meeting set up properly, the right line of questions set up properly. And not to say you don't right now, but I'm just, you know where I'm going with that, right? Yeah. So, because the old saying is the first impression is the biggest impression, right? Uh, that, cool. That's the key thing. If you want to get other people to follow you and, and oh. you know, mentor them, right? Because cool. I think you're going to do great at this. It's just a matter of just never, ever giving up, right? And uh, that's how you grow. So that's just my old stick on that. But yeah. How'd you become so good at sales, Mr. Belanger? Uh, well, I'll, I'll get uh, credit towards the street first off. Um, so, you know, when you get ripped off and punched out and not that I've been really punched out, but, you know, a lot of fights that I've been Would you consider yourself stuff. a master salesman though or no? Or like a very yeah. proficient sales professional? Like, how proficient. would you describe it? Like oh, if you were sure. to, if you were to put, if you were to break down the inner game and then like mm -hmm. share like a quick, like, you know, run of the mill on a skill sets, like, uh, well, it depends what like, you're selling. Like the, maybe like how you train your guys sometimes or like however you would share it. 
Well, kind basically, of... there, there's a wheel for everything. Great question. So no matter what you're selling, you know this. I don't give a fuck that's, uh, you know, car insurance, uh, car sales, uh, steel buildings, uh, fucking Dicky D cars. It don't matter. There's a wheel for everything. So the whole thing about sales, in my opinion, is, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, but every wheel is different for, for each industry, right? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I'll never take anything away from the Wolf or, or, or all those top tier guys, sales guys like Grant Cardone and all them. But if they told me, if we were in a room with all the top guys in the world that are, we'll, we'll call themselves the, the number one sales guys in the world, I can guarantee you they will not outsell me when it comes to my industry because I perfected it. So it would take them time to learn that wheel and what works and what to say and what not to say and not what not talk about and, and having the right tonality at that given time and things that we all know, like it's just the fundamentals of conveying trust because people buy from people they trust. So it boils down to your tonality and if you're genuine and, and so on, right? And the tools that are providing your basic fundamental uh, breakdown to narrow them down, like Jordan's got it down to a science through the, the SLP, right? He narrows you down. He doesn't let you get out of the fucking straight line, which is spot on in any industry keeps you in the flow, then hopefully gets you to a yes, right? So we'll do, to answer your question, do, do I think I'm one of the best in my industry? For sure. Uh, I've trained kids, and I'll put it this way. I trained a kid who was trying to sell me pens and pencils off the street, 20-year-old kid, came from a kind of a tough family. He's wearing a $2 suit that was way oversized for him. It's plus 30 degrees outside. He's trying to sell me Disney calendars and markers for the kids, and sure shit, I, I, I really love this pitch so much that I said, you know what, I gave my car. Is everybody to nice in Canada, Mr. Bellinger? No, well, beautiful Canada. I love it. Okay. If you ask me to pick a place to live in my entire life, I've been everywhere. It's Canada. Oh, okay. I like the four seasons, but not to, to get into that right now. But this kid. Is I it friendly hired... though, Canada? Like, is it nice? Like, how are the projects in Canada? Are they friendly? No. No, okay. I don't know. I, I, no. I, I, haven't I don't think in Canada, everybody's really nice to each other and they say, I mean, hey. Do, do I think we're the <laughs> friendliest you, people? You, I'm sure well, your neighbor, you, have, you have things of your neighbors. <laughs> well, my neighbors, you know, it's funny. My neighbor's the president of the police <laughs> right next door. He's, yeah. He lives in the same house I have, but he's the president of the police union, the Toronto police, right? Another guy's detective for uh, the Durham Regional Police. This whole fucking street's full of cops. Right. But to go back to your question about this kid, it's a really great story. I hired him, sent him to my HR to say, no, give him the job. I'm going to recommend him. I trained him. This kid now is a, like a fucking millionaire living in a, oh, a million snap. point five home. Has two kids now, married, started with nothing. Right. There's like five guys in the office that I trained and mentored. They're all millionaires now. Right. So am I a good trainer? Yeah. In my industry, the best. The only trained or made as many successful reps as I have in this company that I work for. And there's 78 reps in this company I work for, which I'm not going to divulge the company name out of the privacy for themselves, uh, only because my, you know, what, what I'm sure they don't want me talking about that, or uh, let alone I don't want to give shit like that up, right? So, um, but going back to uh, your question about Canada now, because we're going to like, you know, zigzagging here, uh, Canada's awesome. I mean, it's freezing out right now. It's only minus two, but typically we'll get like minus. Or the 15. Bahamas. <laughs> well, Bahamas was nice, but I couldn't wait to get home after five days. My kids were like, "Hey, I'm 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 ready to go home because we missed oh, the gosh. dogs." Yeah, Bahamas are nice to go there, be on the beach, but to, for me to live I don't down like there, the snow. <laughs> I lifted the snow for a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. You're in New York, but if you were in Canada, you grew it was up in Connecticut. In- it was in Connecticut. Okay, but if you were skiing every year, like I go skiing a lot, my kids, right? Uh, there's a lot of great snow things that we do up here that I don't mind the, the, the snow. I love it. Now, when I get older to retire, do, would I move down to Arizona or maybe Miami? Sure, right? Uh, but right now, I, I just, I love being in Canada. I mean, and to be frank with you, uh, out of my travels, I think, and I'm not, you know, bashing anybody or any cultures or anything, but I'll tell you, Canadians are typically really nice people right? We're pretty easy going and we're actually ranked one of the nicest. Well, uh, I forget what the, where we saw the report, I forget the name of the, um, the, the, the body, but at any rate, we're actually one of the rated one of the nicest people in the world, right? <clears throat> Not that it really matters, but my point is going back to um, sales. Do, uh, do I think I'm good? Yeah, I think. Do you I'm like it when people message good. you like for questions? Sorry? Do you like when people like message you for questions? How come you don't post more content like online, by the way? 
Mr. Bynum. Ah, uh, because I'm busy and, and to be honest, you have a lot funny. of knowledge, pretty much. But my, my kids, well, my kids follow me now. It's like fuck. <laughs> So I kind of keep it down to a tone. I have to block one of them. But the point is, it's just, it's time now. I don't have time to be posting more shit on. Like I was crazy a couple of years ago when you start following me. I was pretty fucking nuts, right? Uh, but it's just, just real cool time. Guy. You're genuine. Yeah. yeah I, 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 think, I think the Holy Spirit like is with you. Like it's, it's a good thing. Because a lot, the world doesn't that. know of the Holy Spirit. You get me? They only know of God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit, you don't really know the Holy Spirit unless you know the Holy Spirit. I, like, the Holy Spirit is, like, with you. Like, in Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I, it's I just pray. real. It's just real. Yeah. Yeah. I pray every night, bud. Either or I'll get lazy and ask my wife to prayer in bed. Uh, but either we yeah. pray every night. My daughter yeah. says prayer yeah. every Sunday dinner. We're very strong Catholics here. Don't kid yourself. I mean, people think, oh, the guy's rough and tough and all this stuff. No. I raise a very tight ship in terms of my kids. But I tell my kids, break the fucking rules. Do some crazy shit. I mean, don't think like the rest of the 99% of the people. Be out there. Do Be yourself and don't worry. Again, the yeah. one thing I want to stress to them, they're having trouble with it right now because they're young, is I try and teach them like, hey, man, stop worrying about what everybody fucking thinks. Relax. Just be yourself, but don't be yeah. rude. Don't, don't be negative. Don't be any of that you know, bullshit. But at the end of the day, if you feel like you don't want to do something, or you want to do and post something, but you're scared of what your, yeah. your friend might think or your teacher might think, well, you're never going to grow. Right? So. So other than that, you're, so you, how's your podcast coming? I mean, we're doing it right now. It's, it's pretty cool. I like it. It's a fire yeah. episode. Yeah. People are watching it, which is awesome. You got me. What, 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 what I mean, how would you want to title this episode pretty much? Because you're pretty much like a story where it's just like anything is possible. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. I'd probably leave that up to you. But I think uh, maybe a good header from from con man to just, I don't know. I You didn't hit me with that one. I didn't have to think about that. <laughs> I don't really, really look at it like that too much. But I always kind of throw out that content like I did today. You saw it today. Uh, and that's, again, that's why I said to you earlier in your podcast, I still don't forget when I struggled. I'll never forget it when I struggled. So that's what drives me because I never want to go back to that because anything could happen. I could have a lawsuit that hit me, me lose everything. I always just think, hey, remember when you struggled. So just keep moving. Right. And that's why I always, you know, post uh, content about my past of going into prison and all that. It's not because. I'm bragging about it, but what people don't realize, like when I was in segregation a few times, uh, believe me, when I was in there, and that's the lowest of the low, when you're in the hole is really the term, but when you're segregated for fighting or whatever it is, right, you can't wait because you're, you're fucking vibing in there, bud. You're raging, thinking, man, I can't wait to get out of this shithole and prove to everybody because everyone thought, oh, no, he's going to be a con man his whole life, just like the investigators and the, and the police said, if anything was going to be a career criminal, it's definitely me because I analyze bank robbers and con men and, and mod made guys and all this shit, right? Is I, I always said to myself, fuck that. I'm going to prove everybody wrong, no matter how much is up against me. If I can pull off what I pulled off already that landed me in the shithole, then I can be anything else I want. If I wanted to be a fucking rock and roll star, and I guarantee I put my head to it for the next 10 years, I guarantee I'd be a rock and roll star. Or if I want to be a leading actor in Hollywood, the way I think now, I'd be a leading Hollywood actor or at least a Hollywood actor if I didn't give up and I try to hone in my craft and be the best that I can be. Just like you're, well, what I'm telling you, to keep doing yeah. what you're doing and Thank don't you. give up. And I promise you, Jesus you'll be the cool. next fucking, yeah, Jesus the, cool kid. The, the next fucking, you know, Larry King. You don't know, right? I don't know. Just You just don't fucking give up. That's the, that's I think I know. I don't know. Yeah, you'll figure it out. That's Probably what I said. what I think. Say. <laughs> you put 10,000 hours, you know what, you're going to be really successful, cool. providing you're really passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, then you can't be because you're not really giving it all, you know, to be that guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. so how do you become rich? How do you become rich? Uh, good yeah. question. Well, find something you're really good at. Put everything you got into it. Again, have passion and you'll be rich right learn a skill like the audience value. yeah yeah you gotta There's have a, a yeah. skill of value right people gotta see you or you know what's your value well how can you help me if you can provide that type of you know service and you're really good at what you're doing at mentoring or whatever that you want to do to help them get out of the hole that they're in 
uh, then you, I think you'd be, be, you know, pretty wealthy providing whatever you're charging. So again, if you ask me that question, I always thought of like you said earlier, I think if I got into mentoring like Wes Watson, for example, this, this guy did a decade in prison. Yeah. You follow Wes? Okay. So if you follow that guy, look at this guy three years ago, he's a, he just finished doing a 10 year bit guys driving four or two rollies and living in a fucking $2 million yeah. penthouse. Right. So it's just when you're in there, you got that rage and you're like, give me the fuck out of here. I'm dying to show people. Right. And oh. when you do and you get out and you stick to the fucking plan and you don't go back to the people you run, you know, ran with that got you into trouble or well, that you were part of can't slowly blame them. You got to blame yourself too. Right. And you stick to your plan. You'll be successful. So anything you could think of that you're really good at and add value, then you'll be successful and make money. Cause when you're successful, money comes. Right. But I can tell you again, it's not all about the money, but, I mean, money's important, but when you got the money, it's great, but you still want something that makes you feel really good by doing something good by helping people, right? So for myself, I would think I would get into mentoring. You'd be my next level and, you know, get a bunch of followers and eventually start charging people and mentoring them because let's be real. Would you argue with me if you did time in prison and I am where I am now and, and I was the same fucking guy you were who was hardcore criminal? Think about it, right? I was a nice Traveling, person, yeah. I was a good think person. About, think about nice. it. We're talking major <laughs> robberies, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not just a guy who got in a fight with the jail or got caught a couple of times and, and got a 10-year bit. I was an habitual fucking, like, you know, criminal my whole entire life as a kid, right? And look where I am, yeah. raising a beautiful family. It's just a matter of taking the steps that I learned to get there. And one is you have to get people to mentor you. So my whole thing was following guys like, the Wolf was one of my biggest mentors and <clears throat> listen to how he set up his sales, which a lot of them, when he, when I, when I learned the SLP, I'll be honest with you. I thought, what the fuck? Great life That's exactly situation. what I've been yeah. doing my whole life. But he actually was able to write it down and explain it to people properly where I didn't even think of it like that. But everything he said, when he, when I first heard about the tonality, holy fuck, but I've been saying that since I was a kid. You got to convey trust in the people to get them to do what you need them to do, so you can get what you want. So again, going back to tonality, isn't all about just sales. So if you can learn how to control people, get them to do what you want them to do, think sure. how much money you're going to make. Right? You don't need the degree. You just need to learn how to get in a well to jump off a bridge and tell them you'll live. Meanwhile, it's a thousand feet in the air, and you go, "Okay, I'll do it." Can you imagine you had that kind of power to get you to jump off a bridge? You're going to die, but you see what I'm saying? You're, you're totally mindfuck. You're yeah. controlling people, right? Okay. Yes, I, I get it. Yes. I get yeah. It. <laughs> so that's, that's that's how you that's how you become, I think, wealthy, right? I mean, uh, or or rich, or whatever the what you want to call it. But I can see the lens know, on, from the right from the reality of like or that stands in like ground. Yes. Yeah. So that's the whole thing. I tell my it's kids. It's beauty. Like, you know, and yeah, the beauty of that is ex da, 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 da. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I tell my kids, if you don't know what you're doing yet, <laughs> my daughter wants to be a pilot. She's pretty focused on it. She loves it. She's How'd you get so that. good, Mr. Belanger, with it? Because that's like a <laughs> tremendous like testimonial for like, you know, JB himself, you get me, where it's just like, look, look at Eves. Uh, and, and he's rich. He made the system work. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. Living in a, a 4,800 square foot home, it's 40, 4,800 square feet, this fucking house. It's worth probably about a million eight, right? This is a guy with zero education who's my neighbor who's the fucking president uh, the, uh, the president of the police union. Like, this is a major job he's got. He's living in the same house I have. So he's probably thinking, what the fuck did this motherfucker do? See what I'm saying? I'm making more money than my fucking doctor's making. I'm making more money than the fucking some of my the lawyers I deal with. You see what I'm saying? Did you so write patterns? Like, like, or did you, like, how, how did you get good at looping? And then, yeah, yeah. Well, again, reassuring. In, well, again, that's from the street. Like, just trying to get what I need them like to do. Like three loops, or like how many loops do you like? Do you run? Like, do you <coughs> oh, just run like? Okay, matter. perfect. How do you? How do you? Things. Perfect. How do you get to that Let point? Me. And then, like, do you do you have like loops that you've written out, like scripted beforehand, or did you just well, like learn on the? Did you create them on well, the fly? Yeah. In, you get me. In my good question. In my industry, yeah. yeah. So the loops is as many as it takes. So my question, go back to you, is how many loops did it take you to get me on your podcast? I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't looping. <laughs> okay, but you kept okay. asking. You were. I did ask. Yeah. And uh, you, you actually brought please. it up one time. You're like, "Can I do something for you?" I was like, hmm. well, "I don't want to ask him. I don't think I'm gonna ask him." Oh fuck! You brought it up. Okay, I'm gonna ask him. 
I'm like, wow, that was very generous ask. of you. Yeah, I was just kind, and then ask. I acted yeah. on that. Because yeah, well, some people, asking, maybe they'll be like, fuck it, I'll doubt myself. And then like, they'll think yeah. negative and they'll push themselves off. But I was open. Well, you know what? If so worst case scenario, because I, 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 I have God using the Holy Spirit. Because I believe, yeah. I don't know, I, but yeah, I believe everything's already like pre-written to a certain extent. We're kind of living yeah. it. But we get to make a couple of cool decisions along the way. Like, yeah, so, I don't know. Well, and God is cool. Especially if he uses you as a testimonial, like Mr. Blenger. Yeah. Well, I'll give you any testimony you want, anything I can do to help you. But because <laughs> again, you, you were looping, you didn't realize maybe, but you were looping me for the last oh, year. Oh, really? Back. Yeah, oh, okay, I mean, because cool. you're always reaching out, you're always giving praise and all that. And I thought, you know what, I like this kid. And eventually I decided to give back to say, look, the poor guy who's going to do it down in Bahamas, but I'll be honest, I was very busy. And, the, and to be honest with you, I had a bunch of these and I just kind of want to make sure that I'm going to give you a proper, you know, interview and not off the cuff and disrespect you like that. Right. So, uh, and that's the other thing. You need to be very respectful amongst anybody. Be kind to everybody, man. You don't need to be an asshole like you see these people with money and they're just they they treat the the waitress or waiter a little differently. Like no, treat them like you're, you're they're they're one of you. And, and again, you'll get better service, or whatever it is that the you know industry you're in or or you're in the grocery line or anything. Hold the doors for people. Like just be kind every day because when you're kind every day, you feel good about it, right? So that's just the bottom line. But my phone keeps calling in. But if I'm blocked out, that's probably why. Can you still see me? Uh, I can see your name. Ah, hang on here, decline. There we go. Just a lot of calls come on here. Anyway, no worries, but my time's for you right now. So, oh, thank uh, you so much. I, I put time aside for this too, but to know that you did as well, this uh, that's a, it's a great delight. Thank you, Mr. Blanker. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, so let me ask you a few questions. So you worked with the wolf. You so did you go down? Because I know you messaged me a couple of years ago. You're gonna go when he was living in California, though. No, I didn't. No, I did not go. No. I okay. prayed on it. I thought no. I mean, I, I like I I know that I would have gotten hired if I did, but like I didn't know. I just well, I, I I think I did something else for how it was. Well, just imagine if you did and you took that leap. Like you said, no, 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 take that leap. And if you yeah. did, I know I would have. Like, yeah. You shake a few hands, right? Then you know a couple other more people. Then they're following you. Then they it, 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 they comment, and then all of a sudden, I'm just saying that that's how it works, right? You got to put your you put your heels in and just keep pushing and. Be, you know, put your head down and plow through every for the next decade, right? Now, here's the thing with the wolf. I'll be honest with you. I was relying on that guy because I felt we have the same story because we both have a book and a movie and all that bullshit, right? But I was relying. You do have a lot in common. Story. It's, it's, you, you do. You do. You two do have a lot in common because you'll say you got me. It's rare when sometimes you have things that are like in common, but when they're there, you got me because you guys have a lot of stuff in common in a positive way. It's, it's a positive 100%. system. You got me. It just is. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So, and that's why I think I carry some weight that's too in terms line. of the magnitude yeah. what I did. Now, do I think what I did, what he did, is, is a lot harder to pull off? Yeah, I think to to be do what we did and be that successful doing it without getting caught once. Trust me, most guys will do like a commercial break and enter four or five times and they get caught. Right? You don't get away with it for the next seven years because of the operation we ran it was so tight. We kept our mouth shut. Nobody talked. We, we're, it was just business. That's how tight I ran. We ran our ship, and then eventually with wiretaps and the money we're blowing and gambling. We're spending like tens of thousands betting. Like people wonder where the fuck are they getting the money? And people start talking, right? And eventually yeah. you take a pinch. So what now? Can I make a lot of money doing that again now compared to what I learned? Now, sure, I can go back out and start working again. But I know what's wrong, and eventually I'm going to take a pinch. And then, you know, my kids got to come see me. So there wouldn't be a good example. So I picked a different industry and decided to get into sales. Because sales, let's be real, it's the highest paid uh, occupancy in the world, right? Depending on what you're selling and, and not yeah, to mention you can sell the product. It pays well, people. by the way, but it's more the benefits. Like there's yeah, tax credits and like, you got me, like there's benefits towards people. If they use that for, you got me, what? Because it's it's like, it's a write-off of like, I forgot, I forgot how many thousands. Sometimes people use it for a boat. Well, it depends on your tax. I don't know what it is. Right? You have to have you get me good sun time. <laughs> so it just depends. Yeah. You get me. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some sentence, but let's both be real. It, California's it is 80%. Yeah. It's very, very stressful job, but it pays well. Right. But I'm okay with stress because when you're doing the things we're doing, just think like who the fuck jumps on a roof and does a fucking major break and enter thinking that ain't stressful. It's stressful, but after a while you kind of get used to it, right? So, and that's, that's the whole thing about confidence. That's the other thing, I'll be honest with you, going away to prison, getting out, when I got out, my confidence level was through the roof because now I know what's in store for me. And it's just, 
it gave me this extra, you know, kick to me, right? Because I was so confident in myself to think, okay, I'm going to try and, you know, get my first job. So I got my first job at 28, right? 28 years of age. So just think when I see these young guys crying, oh, I, I, my life is ruined. I'm 24. I don't know what to do. And blah, 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 blah. And they know they fuck by it. You got your whole life ahead of you. Don't worry about it. Just pick something that you really love to do. Try as many things as possible. And if you find, pick up something, you think you're just, you're good at it and you like it, then run with it. And then let's see where it takes you. Right. So again, how old are you now? 22. Oh, fuck. Come on. 22, but I was doing major scores. You see what I'm saying? You got your whole life ahead of you, bud. You got so much potential in you. If you keep doing this, and I know you love it. Man, the world's your oyster. You're going to fly, bud. I promise you. You'll be so wealthy that hopefully then you'll have me on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Right? So that's how I I'm look fortunate, at that. to be honest. I'm building my wealth now, to be honest with you. Because, like, I didn't grow up rich. And I'm like, yeah. that's cool with me. And I don't know, like, it's cool. You get me. I've made a lot of other people money. I've made other people tens of thousands of dollars. Probably a couple hundred thousand dollars here yeah. and there. So it's like I've produced for other people. I've made them small fortunes. Like, it was cool. Yeah, here and there, that's good. Eventually... Like, this other guy that I worked for in, like, 60 days, I made him, like, 40 to 60 grand. I didn't get a nice. snip. I didn't get a snip off that. But I was chilling. So I've always, but, but I've always had, like, a plan that I'm, like, working. Like, I, I always take calculated risk. So when you yeah. take calculated risk, you got me, like, a positive way. It's like you can mitigate, you can you can adjust, you can pivot, you can adjust. That's straight lines based on that as well. You're open yeah. to what's happening, and then you just keep swinging. But yeah. through all that, you get me. I hope you're growing because you have to grow. And then when we grow, you get me? Like, it's a very positive thing. Yeah. Right? You know, right. absolutely. 100%. What tip I find you're better? Because you're, and then we're goal oriented from, from the beginning. So every, and, and, and we're just reverse engineering everything. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm like no, working on my goals and shit. So, yeah, I'm, so, so I'm thinking of, that's where my mind is going right now. Yeah, you can always connect the dots looking backwards, not forward, just like you know, Steve Jobs says. It's spot on, right? But if you could do yeah. that and you figure out, hey, this worked, because look, I'm going to go back and see what I did to make sure that it did work. I'm going to keep doing that, right? Uh, but one thing I, I will tell people that I've learned myself, just why like, I'm still a pretty decent shape guy for a 48-year-old, right? Uh, is I find too, man, hit the gym. Uh, that's one tip I would give people because when you're working out and I know you're growing um, of, from a couple of shots I've saw is when you, when you get in phenomenal, really great shape, you feel like a million bucks. And if you feel like a million bucks, your confidence is through the roof. If you can control your confidence and not be, you, you like know, the rock, right? Mr. Belinger. Exactly. Right. If you can get <laughs> your, your, you know, your body, like looking like a fucking Chippendale, or that you're strong and you feel good about yourself, that translates into a good life as well. That'll help you again with your job or your family or your friends or whatever it may be in order for you to have people gravitate towards you because they see the spark in you, right? You're different. And I'll tell you, anywhere I go, and my wife please says to me, please, honey, be on your best behavior. <laughs> I normally always stand out in the crowd I'm in or the, the dinner table I'm at or a party I'm at because I'm like, fuck it. I say a lot of unorthodox things that normal folk won't say. And you know why? Because they're worried about what everybody okay. fucking thinks. And I look at it like, I don't have to worry about that. Because if they find out who I am, they're going to say, well, wait a minute. He did all that. Yeah. But you know what? He's pretty successful. He's, he's been married 20 years. He's got a beautiful family, beautiful house. He fucking, you guys live right. a rock and roll life. They Absolutely. can't say shit. Right? Absolutely. I don't have to worry about you see what I'm saying? I could say whatever I want because all my employers. So how come you choose to be nice to everybody still, though? Uh, yeah, because I mean, the straight line is different, though. People just treat you different when you walk into the room. Did you kind of, yeah, would you agree? Like, we agree on that? 100%. Yeah. They that's, treat you like a celebrity. Right. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's why degree. you have yeah, the right inner game and all that, and who you are as well. 100%. So, was I quiet for the first three years? Yeah. It you know, has to feel like that. 100%. So it's funny. I was very, I've been very successful the last 20 years. Very successful. I've been making well over fucking big, big money for the last 20 years every year. Right? Very, very good money. Like, forget this. I don't start working, money. by the way, till January 1st. We're going to go on a seven day blitz. I already have like cash coming in, which is chilling. So I'm yeah, like, I'm, it. yeah. I just did a deal, but I got paid. Uh, I'll have it at the end of the month, twenty-seven thousand. One deal, right? I'll get bonus down eleven thousand. So I got what the heck? Those commissions are awesome. 
That's like real estate. That's why, have, that's why I have to stick to real estate. So how do you how do you get rich? How can you make those giant commissions, sir? Because you told me you once know, when I was younger, go for the bigger commissions, the whole. So the yes, commissions here are like yeah. four grand, five grand, like. Yeah. So like cars, and don't get me wrong, these guys make a lot of money selling cars. If they're the best, of the best. <laughs> they make a lot of money. I don't sell cars, but all right, try right, right, right. Where you're selling big products, big things. Selling so what I do is I sell big, massive steel buildings, like big suckers, like five hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollar buildings, hundred thousand dollar buildings. And so because we're building from scratch, I dictate what I need to put in the building in terms of gross margin. Right. right. And I get a percentage of that. So if I steal you again, this is the thing about reading people that I learned from the street of learning what's really in your head. Like I'm a superpower. Then I think, Hey, I could put 20 K in that deal versus him saying, Oh, I shot. <laughs> cool. Yes. So I dictate what I want to put in the deal. And there's a lot of guys that walk on the deals with no money in the deal because I'm not working for free either. I don't, I'm not the guy who needs to brag. Hey, I got a tick on the board. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy I'm here for one reason is to make money. That's it. I'm not here for fucking look at all the volume I'm selling, but there's no margin. In and a lot of guys will do that in the offices. Hey, look at me and do the strut. How's your paycheck? Zero. Shut the fuck up. Then keep walking. Right. So they don't even bother breeding that shit with me because there's a lot of the guys who kind of look at me like, oh, don't even bother with him because he's an old guy and he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Right. But it's amongst their, their themselves. Right. But so how did I become wealthy? I mean, it's it's sales. And again, I sell a good product that uh, I get to dictate what kind of money I put in that deal. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just like anybody who sells any Absolutely. other service. If a guy quotes you on a kitchen for your parents home and he wants to charge you 75,000 and your parents like his work, oh, I'll pay the 75,000. I don't want shitty work. Cause you're helping them. It's a value. You get you, their, their life is better without it. You get me. They got something that was greater and of more value to them. You get me than what they had. And that's, you get me a good deal. Exactly. And, and, so, and, 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 and it is a good deal. Exactly. So like when my clients call me and they send me a text, they get a text as humanly fast as possible. They call me, I call them humanly as fast as possible. So they get the best service. So they keep coming back to me. Then they're giving me referrals, right? So you don't drop your game on that. So that's where I'm an expert in my industry because I have a format or the straight line or the wheel, whatever we want to call it that I have perfected, that I do not veer off of. And that's what's made me successful. I don't try and reinvent the wheel or anything like that, just like you won't in your industry, just like the wolf folk. It's funny, you look at the wolf, for example, right? He did solar training, by the way, for some Sorry? solar company um, outside. In, I think it was in Texas. But he did a solar training, yeah, for some company yeah. there. Okay. Maybe if Chris sees this, Chris Manizzi, you can maybe you should hire Jordan for like a solar training. That'd be good. He recently got his training, Knockstar. Yeah, he put, oh, yeah, really? yes, yeah. That's on the Lightspeed platform. I know they almost Jordan almost had it hosted on like the Lightspeed platform, but it's on the, a different platform. It's certification 4.0. It's okay. a fire program. Everybody should get it. Yeah. Cool. Well, point it's, is though, look at this guy uh, who came out with, with yeah. no money. The guy owes a hundred million, but yeah, he's living high, you know, jet setting and everything. See, like once you get to that point, you could you could take Jordan right now, take all his money away, and start from scratch again. He's going to be successful. Right. It's just once you get to that level and you know what you need to do to get to the level because you've perfected it, uh, you're going to be saying, like, <laughs> yeah. for example, myself, take everything away from me. I don't want to do it. Mr. Belanger, I hear noise. Can you hear me? No, pause it. Well, I was just saying, though. You, you can't be, hello, can you hear me? Yes, recording in progress. Okay. You, can't, <laughs> you can't sell a course. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to tell you this. So oh, you actually, let me pause it. This is, you, want, you want me to pause it or you want to just chat? I'm cool with anything. I don't care. We'll chat. Do whatever you want. I will right, we'll do both. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this much, just to really venture you, give you my honest opinion, Noel, is you can't sell anything or mentor really anybody until you actually you know can lead by example and show sure. why i want i need to listen to you why would i listen to you versus myself when we're both in the same boat right i mean i believe okay. you fake it till you make it don't get me wrong sure. right but you can't fake it till you real. make it until you show what the fuck you're talking about right until you're actually cool. 
showing that, hey, you're living in a nice house and you're driving a nice car, which I don't recommend you buy a nice car until you really got some coin. Yeah, we we'll get a Cadillac soon. I like Cadillacs. So yeah? A lot of the, yeah, I like Cadillacs. Okay. But you know what I'm saying, right? You, you can't be uh, right. selling it unless you're just fooling people, right? And they're not going to fall for that shit. They, yeah, I mean, they, they, fake, I, yeah. I, just like myself, like I got your attention because I'm real, right? I oh, mean, there's yeah. no bullshit here. I'm, I'm living the dream and yeah. uh, I got no education. And it's not that I have no education too. It's the fact that I shouldn't be living the dream because of all the carnage and crime that I did. Right. But now that was cool. back then. If you look at me now, I'm such a good person because I, well, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, I donate a lot of money. I, I help a lot of people on social media that I see them in a pinch and I'll throw them a few hundred just like that with your email and, and not ask for anything back really, that I genuinely feel that they need help. Right. So, <laughs> and if people really like my friends, they all know me, they go, no, no, that's not Eve now. Eve is like a really good fucking guy. He's straight up. You may not like what he says sometimes because I'll call you out on it. But at the, at the end of the day, he's, he's, he's just a good guy because he, he, he's a good father. He's, good husband, and he's for real, right? And I help a lot of people. And that's why I'm saying, you know, be kind to everybody. Try and be kind to as many people as you can if they deserve it. Now, if you got a prick out there and you think he's an asshole, call him out on it. I call everybody out. If I think you're an idiot, I'll call you out on it, right? I'll send you a direct email. You're a fucking idiot, bud. What the fuck's your problem? You know how many guys will DM me some negative some negative shit like why do you talk about your past so much shut the fuck up want to know why because it's raging in me still to sell when i was in the hole that hey i'm going to do something in my life and secondly it helps people because i get a lot of dms like yesterday i had a guy from two years ago i don't know if i mentioned this dm me from uh two years ago asking me because i told him what i should get into getting the sales well like gets into car sales he's been doing it for two years besides he dm me two years later hey i stuck to your your plan of doing really well with it. I'm the, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just want to say Merry Christmas and thank you. Two years later, like, you see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, if you, you again, you find something you want to be uh, good at and that's how you, you know, answer your question again, you keep asking me, but how do you become rich? Well, you got to find something you're good at and, you know, you know, they can help people and, and that's how you become, I think, successful, right? I won't get I stuck in things that I want to do down the road. Like, because I, I see myself as a, I think I'm going to make history, to be honest with you. You so, will. Some, like, I, I don't doubt it. Yeah. I, I guarantee I have that kind of vibe. you will make, you'll make history. I guarantee it. I bet my life yeah. on it. If you don't stop what you're doing right now. Yeah. If you're really genuine and you do what you're doing right now, I, I'll bet my life you will be super successful. It's a fucking guarantee. Unless there's something you're not telling me about yourself or I don't know and but at the end of the day, I yeah, see I'm a cross dresser. Like, no, I'm keep, kidding. Keep sticking to this. <laughs> uh, this God, is good. Cool. Yeah. Grace and mercy, repentance, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, but your parents, I'm sure, they're pretty proud of you, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, life is cool. Are you the only child, or do you have any siblings? Um, I have a sibling. I have a little sister. She's like one of my little treasures in life. She's cool. Oh. She's for sure. I bet I can only imagine, right? So yeah, my little sister. So I was cool. protected. I've always protected you know her what? growing up because I've always been popular as fuck growing up. Yeah. So it was yeah, it was, it was cool. Uh, yeah. So I mean, she's she's always been protected. She's always been cool. Like life is cool. cool. Life is just cool. Like God is cool. Yeah. But every day. But, I mean, but it's fun. cool. It's still cool. Yeah. That's the whole thing, man. I love my life, man. Every day I get up, I see my kids, I see my dog. I just think life is so amazing. It's such a gift every day. When I go up the stairs every night, man, I think, ah, I'm losing another day, right? Like my daughter's going sure. away to university in September and I'm dreading it, but I want her to go because she's going to flight school, right? To be a pilot. And I'm dreading it because I'm going to miss her now, you know, and eventually I'm going to lose my other one to school and I'm gonna, we're going to be yeah. empty nesters. And I'll be honest with you, I'm like really sure. Would that be romantic for you too? Sorry? Would that be romantic for you too? Was that romantic? Yes. Uh, well, I will move out soon, open. probably. Hope if things work out, I should have my own place again in March. Just chill in, like February, yeah. March. Yes. Well, if things work, continue to work out in Jesus' name, always in Jesus' name. I, I, I tell you right now, I uh, say this to the young guys all the time too. You're never going to grow until you're so fucking struggling that sure. you need to move out to struggle in order to grow. You know oh. what I'm saying? If you're, if you're okay, not shitting, yeah, I mean, okay. 
Yeah. So if you're not shitting a brick because you can't cover your rent, you're not going to grow because you're young. So go, go ahead and fuck up. Fall flat on your face. Get evicted. You grow when you do that. You lose your car because you couldn't make the payment. I promise you, you'll grow. Right? Yeah, I know. I usually succeed, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for the outside, you, like, that's good, yeah. <laughs> you got, like, and like I say to my wife, I'm worried about my kids because my kids, really, to be honest with you, other than the mentoring you're trying to give them, but I worry about them because they've never struggled ever. <laughs> ever. Where I struggled, I met many Christmases as yeah, a kid. Yeah, but you, no get, you made them get their own jobs. That's a really good thing. Oh, they know 100%. the value of a dollar. Or like, or well, what, is, is it called a dollar, dollar in Canada? Yeah. Is it called a dollar Sorry. in Canada? Is it called a dollar in Canada or is it called yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know value of the dollar. They don't have a clue about money. They just get the money and they spend it. They have no fucking clue. They got lots to learn. And, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of say to my, my wife and that, I mean, you give me a kid who's from the projects and you put him beside my daughter. I mean, she's going to learn some things that he's not privy to, but I promise the kid from the project who sees the opportunity pretty much might excel uh, more than my daughter would because he sees the opportunity and, and the struggles that if he doesn't hit that opportunity, take advantage of it. The, the struggles, what motivates him, he doesn't want to go back to struggling, right? I don't ever want to struggle again, right? And that's my motivation because anything right. can happen. I can get cancer and all of a sudden I lose my throat box of cancer and I can't sell. If I can't sell anymore, eventually the money's going to go down. I got to pick something else. Oh, like assets. Right? Well, if I even don't survive it. Hmm? Do you have assets, sir? Because you make a lot of money every year. Yeah, I got assets, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to buy yeah, I got a lot of assets. I got a lot of mutual funds. I got a lot of investments. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not into buying the big cars anymore. I made the mistake buying a Viper and the fucking Audis and all that bullshit. I'll be honest with you. I see these guys on social media and they're buying these big cars, but yet I'm living in a much bigger house than they are. And I'm thinking, Bob, you're making the same mistake I made in my younger years, right? You got no business buying a Roly or a fucking Bentley or any of that shit unless you got at least fucking at minimum at least five million liquid in your bank, right? Don't be one of those turkeys trying to get a big car and lay and look at me. In the end, it's a complete waste. Invest in yourself. Invest in the real estate. Invest in something that's going to grow, right? And if I can, now that's a major mistake I made in my early years, right? Because uh, I was making doctor money 20 years ago, right? So if I would have really woke up, I'd be fucking living in a castle if I would have started, you know, use my money right at the beginning. Uh, but for the first decade, I was just fucking high flying, spending, doing whatever the fuck I wanted, right? So that was fun, right? Yeah, yeah it was fun. But at the end of the day, if I can go back to Bradley, it again, I wouldn't have bought that. I wouldn't have bought any of that shit. I, I really would have used my head and put, put in more in a, you know, investments mutual funds because it's my tax bracket but it's fucking i'm at the highest tax bracket in the country and you buy mutual funds i can write a portion of that off now is it going to make me super rich immediately no but i'm looking at nine million in mutual fund by the time i retire right that's not bad bread right so but yeah i guess like bradley says not that i follow him i think he's a pretty decent guy i mean he's pretty good at what he does obviously because look what he's done this is a guy again no education um different type of you know upbringing than myself but um the same token he'll sit we're kind of like in the same he don't give a fuck too he'll call you out on anything if you look at some of the stuff um that he says right he'll call it as it is right so yeah look what he came up with right he came up with a type of service that everyone could use and that's what made him rich yeah right that's the only if he didn't have that uh uh that that software program that, you know, that can uh, make sales programs and, and, you know, all that bullshit. Right. He wouldn't be where he is today because he came up with that idea. Right. So come up with some sort of service and invention or something, but it's got to help people in order for you to be uh, successful. Right. And um, that's, I think that's my only thing, or again, mentoring people, but you got to be a really good mentor. You know, Bob uh, Proctor, he has a guy that you, I saw a thing, and I think he's a pretty decent fella. Um, he was on, uh, I forget who he was talking at some show or whatever, but he had this kid who was like worth 20 million bucks. The kid's like worth a ton, right? Sure. Young 24 year old, 20, 20, worth 20 million or something stupid like that. And he's actually hired Bob Proctor and, char and Bob Proctor charged him a million bucks to mentor him for the year. Now think about it. So this guy's worth 20 million, but he's going to Bob Proctor. Probably has more money than Bob Proctor. I'm just saying. But he, Bob Proctor, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to mentoring and getting you focused on really with the pros and cons and where you could be failing on, right? And 
know, just imagine the money he's making, Bob Proctor, just by doing what he's doing. But again, he'd be doing it for 30 years, right? So it's the same thing, man. So I used myself as an example doing the pie cake because I mentor people. I think I could really mentor people for sure. And if I came down with a template and, and I broke down all my questions to mentor you and I did a reverse interview with you, I would have it perfectly categorized and almost timed in terms of how long my hour will be with you to mentor you and where I think you're failing. And you think, well, you need a psychology degree and this and that. Go fuck yourself. All I need is my own experience to show what, it, what works and doesn't. And you can't tell me it doesn't work because you're calling me. You know what I mean? And, and you see what I'm doing online that obviously I know what I'm talking. I'm not faking it. There's no bullshit. This is the truth, right? So I keep telling my wife, that, you know, a decade ago, that was my goal is to be a mentor, uh, to be honest, to help you. Because I do love helping people. I really feel good about it. And that's something I really do love. But right now, I just don't have the time. But is that something I really want to do in the future? For sure. But that's one big thing I'd love to do to help you because... Can I send you I my mean, scripts when I if I write scripts? Can I send you some? That'd be cool. You're so sorry. You cut out. Sorry. Can you say that again? Can I send you scripts like and you review them if that's okay with you? Yeah, sure. I'd like to help you cool. with that. Send me a script, and I might not. So be I'm gonna, I'm, right so like making but... like making my scripts like, uh, and then you just give them like constructive like whatever it is through your lens and like your models, and be like, you could use this, 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 and that. Be well, fair? I will both you. Yeah, that's a little long-winded for me to do that. It would take yeah. quite a bit of time because if that's the case, I do my own script first. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even there yet to write my own script, but if I was to do that, but if I said sure, it to you, I, like, for like, because I mean, you, you you obviously know how to like persuade and like chat. You got me in in a positive way. Mm -hmm. There are positive skills. You got me. It comes down to the individual and like your heart, your soul. And your spirit. Well, one thing I, yeah. I, I'll tell you, one thing you can maybe work on yourself personally, and I know sometimes I'm notoriously uh, bad for it too. Sometimes if I get all a few drinks to me and I'm at a party, whatever, is when you ask the question, wait for the response, right? And then you're hoping the question you're asking, they're giving you the yeah. sort of the response that you're anticipating. So now you're prepared for the response to that. So it's all smooth sailing. It's always got to be sort of a template, just like if you see the world's greatest. You know, the, the top tier, like Eddie Milas, when he does his speeches yes. on stage, it's a template, right? As much as he's passionate about it, he's, you know, rehearsing a million times, but it's all, if, if he did a show in California, he's doing the exact same show in fucking New York, right? But because you're probably not going to see him twice, you just need to hear him once. And if it's impactful to you, it's because he yes. perfected that particular hour showcase that he has call it a pitch it's a one hour pitch but he's got it perfected right that's why you can't really ask him a question when he does a show like that because it could throw him off you follow me so okay. it's a it's the same thing so when you're going to interview people what i would suggest is <clears throat> break down certain types of questions for that particular into you know the guy doing an interview right not to say you're doing a horrible job right now Noah. you're not we're just having conversation again. It's just me and you and all that, Jess. And I'm not uh, saying you're, you know, you're, you're awful or anything. You're, you're great, but there's always room to be better. But to be better, you got to know and be set up to be better and by asking the right questions to make it really impactful and electrifying. So that way, I know how to answer the question better, right? And, and it keeps going along of the the long line. Uh, I guess along the line of questionings that you're yeah. asking leading up to where are you from? I'm from the projects. Here's what I did. I grew up bubble and I just keep going intermentally. You're kind of guiding me along to keep going. And then I tell you, you know, the, the legit stories now what got me here. Right. And the main reason why I got here is one simple reason is because of sales. If I didn't get into sales, I wouldn't be here. Right. Cause I just, I'm really good at talking to people because I had to be because growing up in the streets. Right. Right. You give me a bunch of drug dealers, a bunch of condom. I promise you, put it this way. This is the truth. This one thing I'm going to tell you about. This is a great thing. I can guarantee you, when I was doing time, right? <clears throat> After the two years I got out, stupid me, I took a vacation out Capoco. Two weeks out. I'm not allowed to travel anywhere because I was on probation for four years. So I'm not allowed to try. I got to sign in fucking to the parole officer for once a month. Like, it was a fucking headache. I said, go fuck yourself. I was so institutionalized. Two weeks out, I took a trip to Al Capoco for two weeks. When I got back, they had like a 10 member spin team from the Ottawa police following me back from Montreal, all the way back to Ottawa, arresting me for a breach because that's how fucked up I was, right? But I'll tell you, 
after I got out again, uh, you know, when I was in the joint and all this, a lot of guys were telling me, because I got caught again being in a bar with my cold cues, thinking, ah, oh, they won't, but they're not going to catch me. But I didn't realize I was kind of like a celebrity in Ottawa because we're in the news. Ottawa's folk heroes, the champagne gang, all this bullshit, right? But a lot of the older guys were telling me, hey, look, when you get out, you're going to be a lot of attention on you. What I would do is sit put. I stay put and, and just get through this parole because if you fuck up once, you're going to end up coming back in. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's fucking dark. Sure enough, I ended up going back twice because you couldn't even move around the city without the cop or knowing who I was, right? My, my thing is this, though. All the great guys I met in there, there's a lot of good people in prison. I know it sounds stupid to say that because they did something wrong to end up in there. And just like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of people you know, including yourself, who did something that technically, if you were caught, could have got your criminal record. There's always that something, right? So my point is, I can guarantee if I took 10 guys that I met in the joint and you take me 10 guys from Harvard and we go to okay. apply to a fucking sales job, okay? I guarantee you my 10 guys that I know in prison will outsell your guys, your 10 guys from Harvard. I can guarantee it because one thing is reading the play, reading people, you need to learn that quick on the street. You don't learn that shit in school. Right. So that's a big key thing in sales, as far as I'm concerned, to think what is stopping him from buying the fucking product. And it's just certain line of questions you're asking, which really hold you back. A lot of guys we know that will lie to you. Oh, it's this. It's not that. It's not your wife. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, whatever it is you come up with. Just be you know, looking late. Then I try and rebut whatever that is. But I guarantee the guys from the street or in the joint amongst, against your 10 guys from Harvard, we'd school you <coughs> in sales. I guarantee it. And we're even manhandling a group of people. Give me my 10 guys and your 10 Harvard guys and then get them to manhandle and getting those people to do what you need them to do. I guarantee we will excel because of what the streets uh, uh, taught you, right? So they can't teach that, uh, that shit in school. So Yeah, life biggest, is, I mean, I, I think it just comes down to like the training and like your models and systems. As If the models and systems are good, you can make anybody excel. You get me? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean because you have like whatever it is that you have, you get me, that that would be like bad or good or good or bad. It just depends based on the individual and how much like they want it. Like, and then you get me, if you have systems that are like good, that's not going to hinder the individual. It'll only you get me allow them to soar, you know, like an eagle. Yeah. Cause the, cause the, yeah. And then you get me in between that, they'll develop the skill set, especially if they have good models of like inner game, like, and then like this is how your tonality should be. Right. You know, uh, these would be good competencies. You got I me mean, to be able to integrate, to for you to be able to be more effective from like a bird's eye view, like from like from like a third, from like an outside view, like not yeah. unemotionally like detached, but on the mechanics. You got me in the intricacies. You got me on the lens of what you know allows those mechanics to operate or kick. You got me. It could be a car. It could be another like example, but the social dynamics of it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, so that's, that's the whole that's system of sales. Yeah, so I mean, you're a salesman by heart. I can tell talking to you, but at the end of the day, if you can perfect what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, you're young. You got your whole life ahead of you. I mean, don't sweat it. And just you're incrementally just moving. And the more people you, you know, like they say, the more hands you shake, the lucky you get. The more people you reach out to, the more people you DM, the more fucking posts you do. I'm sure if I posted a lot more like I used to, it's funny you recognize that because you're not the first to call me out on it. And that's good. Is I know I would grow in terms of my Instagram followers. Like, but then again, I look at, I don't give a fuck about the followers. <laughs> you know, I have followers the way I do now is for reasons because, you know, things I've said and done. But at the end of the day, if I really wanted to increase that, yeah, I could put out some, you know, crazy content and, and get right into the meat and potatoes and, you know, start, you know, doing a lot of posts at the office and what it takes to be successful and, and, and breaking down and doing like more of a sales pitch online, you know, things like that. Right. Uh, or hiding, you know, again, hiring a uh, social media guru. Cause at the end of the day, I don't have a fucking clue about uh, social media uh, to this day, even though I, I'm only on Instagram. I had got off Facebook. I was on Facebook for a while, but I got off it like four years ago because <clears throat> what I found with Facebook and it's funny, there was a great pool of people there, but, but I couldn't even keep up. I was being so inundated with people because on Facebook, those are the core people that all really know you because it's Facebook. Instagram is a lot of people don't know you who really support you. But on Facebook, everybody knows you because they grew up with you. 
But Bud, I couldn't even keep up on Facebook because so many of them were texting me, email. How the fuck did you get here? What did you do? I know who you are. Bah, bah, bah. This is ridiculous. Did you win the lottery? Like they still couldn't believe I was here. And then it's like, I can't even keep up. And so I had to get off Facebook because I couldn't help this many people that were actual friends of mine because, or some were, you think they're friends or they're nosy, right? Uh, I just couldn't even keep it up. But let alone too, a lot of women were like fucking hitting on me. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm definitely getting off now because you're messaging me some, some bullshit that I don't need to hear. I'm not going to leave my wife. Well, the the gun, sir. Right? So I know it's a, it's a recipe disaster. I have, unfortunately, I have to get off Facebook. But Instagram, it's a little more tighter. I can control what's coming at me a little better because I got, when people message request me, they don't know I read it. I'll read it. And I just don't respond to a lot of them because... I don't have time, right? Now, I'm sure if I respond to all those fucking people, I'm sure I would have been growing and all of a sudden I'd have 10,000 followers and maybe be verified one day. I don't know. But do I give a shit right now? No, not at all. Did I did, did I really get into that? T- uh, like, f- yeah, about seven years ago? Yeah, I was right into it, right? I thought this is my time now, but I realized I was losing time with my wife and my kids by just sitting there in the, on the couch all the time on the Instagram. So when I'm on it, I try and do it when they're not around to take my time to spend time on Instagram. But when I'm with my kids or my wife or at dinner or anything, you, you will never catch me on social media. Very rare. Because then my family goes without, right? So, yeah. Awesome. Well, sir, how do you want to finish up the episode? Give, give some more game. Don't well, be greedy. Uh, give, well, game, uh, give game, give game. Give game to the, the home. The best game I can tell you about <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever give up. For the young guys out there, like Gary D says, he's spot on. Close your fucking eyes. You got your whole life ahead of you. Don't worry about if you fail, if you lose your car, you get kicked out or fucking get punched out, whatever it is. It, it helps you grow, right? So don't be overwhelmed for the older generation. Uh, they don't know really what they're doing. They're making 40 grand a year, 50 grand a year. I mean, I'm not bashing or anything, but there's such more to life if you're made doing a job you love that actually pays you double or triple or quadruple because it gives you a lot of freedom, right? Now, again, I will say, I don't give a shit what anybody says, the money's up there, and I've done me wrong, like they say with oxygen, it's not everything. You can have all the money you want, but if you're alone with the money, you don't have really anybody to spend time with it and do something with it properly, then it's, it's just money, money to them. Yeah. And, the, the, you know, and, and to get there, I suggest, I mean, the one thing I could say to people, do something you love, right? Get in there. And then if you. I'm a Christian. You, like, I, I want like one girl. You had a tremendous experience throughout like life. <laughs> well, I've been with a lot stud. of. <laughs> oh, I, I won't lie to you there. I mean, I, I'm not proud of it or anything, but I, I will be frank. I was, you know, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of fucking women back in the day because I lived in the bars for five days a week for fucking eight years. Because I only worked on Sundays when you get the cash is killed because, you know, you get the three days of, of money. So you let it build up. And I traveled through Canada going bar to bar to bar because during the day I'd be scouting stores to look for the robbery. And that was a lot of work. People laugh. They think, oh, well, you took a shortcut. Well, no, I'll tell you right now. When we're doing a lot of those scores is it required a lot of work of painstakingly eight hours, 10 hours of drive and store to store to store to case to think, well, which one do you want to hit? It was a lot of work involved. And yeah, it paid well in the end on the Sunday night when we hit the place. But going back to the, the downtime, while well, you're in out of town in a hotel, what do you do? You go to a bar. And then you perfect your game. This is where I learned sales. It's funny you say that. Actually, we're going to hit the nail on the head here. I honestly found that I learned a lot of my sales tactics and my tonality because our whole goal was obviously trying to meet women that we want to fucking buck, right? Obviously, I mean, like, not to be rude about or, or, or anything, but when you're young like that, that's all it is. It's all about, you know, hitting everything you can with a heartbeat because there's a competition going you and your buddies, right? Not that I was the best gun out there, uh, but the point is, so I had my fair share, but I learned a lot of it. Selling is how to meet women and, and be very precise of how to deal with them and, you know, where to meet up with them and how to play them without looking like a cheese ball. You know, I come up with uh, tactics like, you know, you, you, you just sit at the bar and drink because eventually they keep coming to the bar to have a drink. And it's a simple process of like, holy fuck, takes forever to get a drink around here again. And they, it's original. Like, yeah, well, yeah, holy cow. I'm like, all right, bye. Yeah, yeah get her a ride, Coke, too. And they're like, oh, okay. And then you buy them a drink. And then you're just talking. You're not being a cheese ball. Right. And then eventually, if they find you attractive and you're all fucking jacked up, because back then I was jacked up. I mean, it was so bad, put it this way. We were, 
put a little tinge of baby oil on my arms, not to, you know, <laughs> but just a little tinge so they would kind of glow a little in the bar, right? And I think a guy with good arms is like a girl with big tits. What guy does like a girl with nice big uh -huh. titties and cleavage, right? A guy with a tight shirt with big arms, believe me, women love it. I met a, a lot of women in my day. And I would ask them just to qualify so I can get better. Uh, so what, what did you find me? So what, what made you come to me? Well, I got to be honest, it's your arms. I saw your arms across the bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I knew that was one of the weapons I had in order how to lure people in like a fish hook, like you're going fishing, right? Uh, is using the arms. And then of course, a crispy shirt every time. I'm a believer if you go to a bar and you have a brand new shirt on every time, uh, it's a, we use the term crispy because it's so, you know, brand new, crispy, not fucking washed a million time type shirt, right? And then, of course, the other weapon is you got a big fat bankroll like that. You're pulling it out of your hand so you make sure she can see it and you're paying for her drink. They think, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I'm all tanned out. Of course, you ought to got him out of me 100% tan. So, again, perfecting my game of how to meet women is I used every tool possible. Best clothing, bankroll, tan, big arms. And using my salesmanship, my mouth, in order how to lure them in, and that was it. So I learned a lot of that with at the bar scene, right? So I know that went on a tangent, but there's so many, you know, steps to this game that I got to where I am. It's it's all a combination of them, right? So and that's it. But uh, to end your show off, I guess uh, the best thing I'd say is again, I keep repeating it. Is one thing I I've noticed is I've done a lot of things in my life and failed like nine, ten times, and then the eleventh time I succeeded. So I'm a firm believer, no matter what you're doing, I, and that's why I'll stress it to you, don't ever, ever, and I tell my kids this, ever fucking give up. If you love what you do, you don't give up, you bury your head and you find a way, no matter what your mom, your uncle, your sister, your principal, your fucking professor, anybody tells you you should give up, they're out to lunch. If you feel here, you got it in there, bud, and you just don't think, you know, I think I can do it, then do it. If you, now, if you don't think you can, move on, try something else, right? So that's my, I guess, my greatest message to anybody coming from a guy who started with fuck all, you know, he's been in prison a few times, got no fucking education. I can barely write still, right? Uh, is my whole key is never give up, find something you love to do. I love sales. Yeah. I learned how to deal with people and it serves me really well. That's pretty much it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Belanger. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Life by Design podcast show. It was brought to you, funded in uh, part by Noise Apata. Mr. Belanger was a wonderful guest today. Go ahead and share this episode. If you guys got value out of it. Did you hear the clap or you can't hear the clap? Because I know the headset sometimes is good, uh, right? I couldn't hear. I couldn't it's hear. like soundproof. That's why. It was like a clap. Like, no, did you, you hear it now hear or no? It. At all? No. Let me see. No, be because you have your noise canceling on. Uh, hey, hey, you're right. What about now? Well, you can hear like a thump, not like a, you can't hear that. Oh, there you go. So, so can you give me a clap, please, Mr. Blanger? Would that be cool? So just make sure to subscribe, like, comment. We're going to drop Mr. Blanger's Instagram on the bottom. It is top closer 99, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So just okay, go ahead and it. give him a follow. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you. Right on, Noel. Take care.